Welcome back to this channel, which I haven't uploaded much recently due to adulthood. But the NBA season 2023 to 24 season has been fantastic. Um, depends on who your favorite teams are and what you are looking at. There are some new great teams in the NBA, and it's good for the NBA to see some smaller market teams that's climbing on top of the standing. Like the Minnesota Timberwolves and, you know, Nuggets. Even though Nuggets are a reigning champ, but they are relatively smaller than, like, Los Angeles, New York. To start, we have to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves, who have currently tied for the best record in the NBA, tied with the Celtics. They are leading the Western Conference by 2.5 games ahead of the Denver Nuggets, the reigning champ. Carl Anthony Towns is very efficient, over 40% from threes. And Rudy Gobert, probably the biggest um, improvement. He has become back to the defensive player of the year for us, unlike last year. Yeah, but I feel like this Timberwolves team, they didn't make that many changes. Their core is... Um, mostly the same. Mike Conley is still Mike Conley. They brought back Nas Reed, which, which many teams definitely want. And Kyle Anderson has been very solid off the bench. And yeah, this team was just getting better chemistry. And the Troy Brown Jr. has been another good role player for them. They got it from the Lakers, uh, which is nice for them. The Celtics, number one seed in the East. And basically tied with Milwaukee, which we also kind of expected. These are the two teams we expect to see them in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, the Celtics and Derek White, dude. They have so many great players. Derek White is looking like a borderline, like, old star. You can maybe call him something like a star after he shaved his head. And the two J's, obviously, Drew Holiday and the Porzingis. Oh my goodness. This thing is stacked. They still have... Um, what's it called? Al Horford, and they do lose some bench players, but uh, Peyton Pritchard has been pretty good. I, uh, he killed the Kings. I mean, everyone killed the Kings from the Celtics. Uh, that game, which was painful for me to watch, but yeah, the Celtics—they are just too dead, so deadly. But uh, they are still like live by the three and die by the three. And if it stops falling one day or a few games in a series, they could be in trouble. But you know, they got a lot of weapons, so they are definitely they will definitely make a deep playoffs run. And Milwaukee, Damian Lillard, New Jersey, like not the state, but a new team still getting buckets because it's Damian Lillard. Obviously, he doesn't score that much because he doesn't need to, to win. You got Giannis, Chris Middleton, Bru Lopez, and the Western Conference, OKC Thunder and the Kings. These two... Uh, I mean, the Kings made the playoffs last year, so um, I feel like people expect them to make it back to the playoffs, but I don't think many will have the Kings as the fourth seed because people usually, I will see, they put the Lakers, Warriors, the Suns on top of the Kings, and sometimes even Pelicans, but or the Clippers or the Mavericks because the Mavericks, they started so hot. With Luca and Irving, but they are now the sixth seed. And the Canes, I mean, it's up and down with the Aaron Fox, some injuries, but the Aaron Fox has taken the next level. So that's why the Kings still have a good record of seventeen and eleven, even though um Herder and Harrison Barnes are obviously struggling. But the Aaron Fox has unlocked his three point shooting. He's currently shooting about he's shooting about almost forty percent. Can you believe it? The Aaron Fox, the person who's known for his speed and athleticism, is shooting 39% from three. You have to talk about Keegan Murray with the defense. He's been guarding like the toughest opponent's player. And that, and that improvement, in, he's trying to be, he, he's looking like to be a two way all star in the future. Keegan has a great resume this year when he's guarding opponents like good players. Like, we all know Keegan Murray has some great length. 
but people don't know he's fast enough to keep up with shorter guards and faster guards in the league. And the surprising part is the Clippers as well. While、well, they made the trade for James Harden, but Kawhi Leonard and Paul George has been fairly healthy this season, which is very surprising. And they are only seventeen and twelve, which is kind of unexpected because if you think about if Clippers are healthy, you will assume they are the top three seeds in the NBA. You know they are getting older. They are good players. The four big four are approaching mid thirties, kind of. But you can't ignore the super new young team, OKC Thunder, who has basically Rookie of the Year, Chet Holmgren. I believe he will win Rookie of the Year. Way better efficiency, even though his team definitely helps, because when you have so many weapons, SGA, who's MVP candidate, obviously, he's just automatic bucket, and he's a great defender too. And Josh Giddey, um, that off. Core drama. It's kind of crazy. So yeah, that's the craziest thing about OKC Thunder. And I don't know if there's anything going on and what will happen to Giddy, but OKC has been very solid. The Lakers and Warriors. I feel like they have been kind of similar in this season in some ways. Lakers, congrats to winning the first in-season tournament, but they have been very inconsistent, especially outside the in-season tournament. They were five and zero or six and zero, but other than that, they are、um, below five hundred, and they have ups and downs, just like the Warriors.、Uh, Warriors are currently on five-game winning streak, but they are their record is fifteen and fourteen. Also, you have to talk about Draymond Green and his craziness. How now the NBA starts to to think serious about Draymond's behavior because it's a danger to other players. That's why um he's missing at least um three weeks, and I don't think there's like a certain day or games that he will come back unless he proves he can stop choking or hitting, kicking, hurting other players. And since we're in the Western Conference, you cannot ignore the Grizzlies and <laughs> John Moran. They started the season with zero and six or something, very bad at the bottom of the Western Conference. But、um, they start to pick up.、Um, Desmond Bain has been carrying the offensive load, and they don't. They are not gonna have Stephen Adams this season. So I feel like if Memphis, the ceiling is probably playing. Even though John Moran is back, but Stephen Adams is oh my god! Like when the Kings play the Grizzlies, I'm more afraid of Stephen Adams than John Moran because Adams does all the dirty work, offensive rebound, underrated playmaker, a big man who does things that don't show up in the box score and the screen assists. I'm sure he's up there. It's so annoying, like the Ball Brothers, man. Lonzo, I mean Lonzo, like the Bulls, the Bulls have a ton of problems right now, but. They seem to be doing、um, way better without Zach Levine, and I feel like we are all expecting Zach Levine to get to be traded in the next few months, or next weeks, or one month. Yeah, but I believe Chicago. I mean, Chicago is just they are thirteen and eighteen, and their core are kind of old. They don't have a promising young players. I mean, Patrick Williams have been better without Levine. And Kobe White, but you know Vucevic, DeRozan, Loving Caruso is not young as well. Even though he has been very impactful on the defensive end. And to end the video, we have to talk about the potential record-breaking season for the Detroit Pistons. Like I believe the Pistons, they were like three and one or three and two to start. That was like dang, because then、um, K Cunningham is back, and a sore Thompson. Yeah, that's the right Thompson. His shooting is still not there, I believe, but he's a crazy defender. Bagley, um, Bagley, and they got Jalen Duran. And yeah, with all this thing, because they got like Isaiah Stewart is also pretty good. Like yeah, he's solid. James Wiseman and, and Bagley. Okay, they are just fighting for the backup center, which is kind of funny. They are the second overall pick. Like what are they doing? I have no idea. How are they this bad? They spent seventy eight million for the coach Monty Williams. They lost twenty six in a row, and the record isn't it like twenty eight? I feel like they're. I I think they already tied the record for one season because the 
twenty eight losing streak was um across the season from Sixers. I believe they're really tied. They lose one more, boom! It's a record for most losses, consecutive losses in a season, and I believe they are definitely on pace to break in the NBA worst record. Get Kate Cunningham some help, man, and just trade Bog. Wait, is it Bog? No, Boyan, Boyan Bogdanovich. Please just trade him. He deserves better. Come on, get like second round pick. Stop asking for first. He's thirty four. I remember that time they won. I believe Zach Levine dropped fifty one on them, and, and they beat the Bulls that game. The Spurs. We thought when Benyama could do something. I believe I heard people talking they could be a playing team because how good when Benyama is supposed to be, but. You know, they 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 are losing more games, and let's go Canes. I believe they can finish top four in the Western Conference. Happy holiday, yo! Ho ho ho!